Hi, I'm Chef Keith Snow. Welcome to my kitchen. Today, one of my all-time favorites, mango creme brulee. You're gonna love this recipe. So it's very simple to make it. Essentially, the technique is a custard. It's all it is, is a simple custard. Let me show you the steps and the ingredients. Take a sauce pot like this, and here we have two cups of heavy cream, and this is an organic heavy cream. I would recommend you buy an organic one. And this is not whipping cream, it's heavy cream. And there's definitely a difference, which is butter fat, the percentage. So now that that's in there, the next step, and this is, to me, this is a step that you can't avoid, you can't skip it. This is a vanilla bean, and these generally come from Madagascar. They're a little pricey, but you could probably buy two or three of them for $5. Don't be tempted to use vanilla extract because it's not the same dish at all if you use vanilla extract. That has a lot of alcohol in it, and to me, it's not creme brulee unless you use this. The secret to this vanilla bean is getting the seeds out. And when you have vanilla ice cream, you see those little specks in there? Those are vanilla seeds, and I'm gonna show you how to get them out. It's very simple. You take a little paring knife, and you press this down on the board, and you're gonna pierce it, and then carefully run your knife down the vanilla bean, and what you're doing is splitting it in half. So now that it's split in half, I'll show you how to get the seeds out. The first step would be to turn your knife over so the sharp part is pointing up, and then you'll press down into this seed pod, and you'll scrape. Whoop, and I just broke it. You gotta be a little more ginger than that. So you do that, and there you can see thousands of little teeny vanilla seeds, and that's where all the flavor, where most of the flavor is. So we will take that and take our whisk and we'll scrape it into the bowl. And now we'll do the other side. You do not want to waste any of these seeds. And I would recommend using one whole vanilla seed for this recipe. So there we go again with the back of the knife. Scrape out all the seeds and get them in there. And by all means, do not throw these out. You have two options with these. You can put them in there, we'll fish them out later and it will just give that much more perfume to our cream. Or you can take these and take a little jar of sugar and just stuff these down into the sugar and after a little while you'll have vanilla sugar. So when you use the sugar, it will have an intense van vanilla flavor because of these. So do not throw those out, that's a crime. So take them, put them right in and what you wanna do is just give a little whisk and that's gonna break up all those seeds. Now, we have to take this over to the oven and scald it, and that's an important designation. You do not want to boil this because you could break the cream. So just take it over, we'll put it on there, and we'll scald it, and that's a little more than a simmer, but not a boil. So I'll go over and put this right on our LeConte range here. Give it a quick whisk and leave it sit to scald. Now back to our creme brulee recipe. The first step we're gonna do is take our mango here, and this is an organic red mango. This came from Mexico. And what we wanna do is cut the mango. On this website, you will see a video on how to do this. I believe it's in a quesadilla recipe. But inside the mango is a flat, wide pit, and you need to know where it is. And generally, if you stand it up, it falls over, the pit is horizontal to the board. So stand it back up, take a sharp knife, and you'll want to cut alongside the pit. And there you can see the pit. It's very hard and it's not edible. So from this point, we can just take this with a, with a knife, a sharp knife, and we'll take the skin off. And mango, if you don't know, is the world's most consumed fruit in almost every country, particularly along the equator and in the Southeast Asia, they eat a ton of mango. and It's my favorite fruit, it's super. So once we have it like this, we wanna take our knife and just make little dice. And be careful, because it's very slippery. And now we'll give it a little twist and just make a little teeny dice. And this will be a little surprise ingredient that will live down in the bottom of our creme brulee ramekins. Okay, 
So now we'll take them and move them off into this bowl. Now come over here to our ramekins. We want to put these right in the bottom. Just a couple of pieces in each dish. And what's neat about these, you can see some vanilla seeds because I cut the vanilla bean on there, so that's even more flavor. Okay, sort of flatten them out, make sure you get all of it. Now we'll set this aside and we'll continue on with our recipe. In this bowl, I've separated six eggs. Just the yolks are in here. This is one third of a cup of granulated sugar and don't use more than that because this dish is gonna have creme brulee. The creme brulee part, brulee, that means burnt cream, or excuse me, burnt sugar. So on top of the dish will be a crunchy bit of burnt sugar. So you don't wanna uh, raise this amount. Use one third of a cup. And then we're gonna take a whisk right here and bring this together. And what you want to do is dissolve the sugar and also add a little air into your eggs. All right, that's fine. When our cream comes to a scald, I'll show you another technique called tempering. Let me go check on my cream. And it is ready to go, so I'm gonna turn around, excuse my back, and I'm gonna come over here. Now this tempering technique's important because if you put this cream that's pretty hot in there, you'll make scrambled eggs, which we definitely don't want. So we will just go a little bit at a time, and I'm gonna stop for a minute and let my cameraman look at all those beautiful specks of vanilla. Now another thing is, in there are those vanilla pods, so we'll put the whisk right here and guard to make sure they don't fall into our finished dish. So just put a little bit in there, and now you're gonna temper the eggs, and what this does is raise their temperature so it's similar in temperature to the cream. And if you do it slowly, you don't make scrambled eggs. If you pour it in all at once, you might make scrambled eggs. Okay, now this mixture here is tempered. Now we can add the entire lot of this right in. Our vanilla beans stayed inside the sauce pot. So now we'll combine this. Make sure it's good and whisked up. And now we'll reach over here and take a ladle. And this is a little difficult. You don't want to spill this. And we will ladle this custard. Now that we have the cream and the eggs together, it's pretty much a custard. So now we'll pour it in there. And don't fill it up too much. You want to leave a little room on top for that brulee top. And if you have access to farm fresh eggs, the dish will be that much better. In Europe, they have amazing quality eggs. They're a lot deeper in color because they tend to use more natural feed than we do here in the States. So if this was a European creme brulee, it would actually be almost a pumpkin color. And that's the beta carotene from those wonderfully healthy chickens that are producing beautiful eggs by eating a lot of grass. So we'll try to use as much of this as we can, but we don't want to overfill like I said. And that's it. Now from here, we want to take our dish, which will become a bain-marie when we put the water in it. We want to go over to the oven, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So we'll take this and go right over to the oven. And don't slide it in all the way. You want to leave it out just a little bit. We take our tea kettle of water, and you want to pour this water in there to come up the sides of the creme brulee ramekins. There we have it. And now we will slide this in the remainder of the way. This is a 325 degree oven. 
which is considered a very slow oven, 325 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes. And what you're looking for when you take those out, you want to shake it and you'll want your custard to move or jiggle a little bit. If it's really firm, you've burnt it. So watch that depending upon your oven temperature. And I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out in a few minutes. Okay, our creme brulee has come out of the oven. They were cooked just until they were still a little bit jiggly. I took them and put them in the refrigerator to allow them to cool down slightly. Now the brulee part. What we do is take plain old white sugar, granulated sugar, and these are cool to the touch so I can handle them. And you sprinkle some sugar on the top of each one of these. And what you want to do is kind of twist it to make sure that you have even distribution of the sugar. And what that does, we're going to put that under the broiler. Of course, you can buy a creme brulee torch, you know, in a specialty cooking store. But for those of you that don't have the torch, I'm going to show you that you can do it under your broiler, which most of you will have, just as well as the torch. And this is what really makes this dish special because this sugar will caramelize and it will almost form like a little, you know, crust that's hard to crack through. So now these are, are pretty well set to go. We'll pop them in the oven under the broiler. And again, don't leave to check your email. Stay with them and watch. When it starts to brown and it happens rather quickly, you can take them out and then you're ready to enjoy them. So I'm going to go pop them right in the oven. Time for creme brulee. Looking fine, looking fine. There you go. You can see that the tops of the creme brulees have started to caramelize and that's perfect, just what you want. And when you bite into that, you have a little sneaky surprise of that nice tropical mango. Give this a try, I think you're gonna love it. And I appreciate you watching, thanks a lot. To see more tips, techniques, and videos, visit HarvestEating.com. Four seasons, one lifestyle.